You know, today's world seems to be getting more and more busy, making it a challenge to find and spend quality time with our children. Today's guests have some, some interesting ideas how to do that and how to develop better relationships with our families. Jay and Laura LaFoon are the authors of Ultimate Dad Night, 75 Amazing Activities for Dads and Kids. Jay and Laura, welcome to Bridge City News. It's great to be great here. To be here. Excellent. Great to have you. So give us a brief overview of your book and tell us why you thought it was important to write this. Well, men tend to uh, connect with other people uh, shoulder to shoulder. Uh, women are more face to face. Men are it, it, activity oriented. In other words, I want to go golf with my buddies. I want to go hunt with my buddies, go fishing with my buddies. We're side by side. And so oftentimes when we see moms and kids connecting in that little face to face, we get insecure because that's not our style. And, and so being a creative guy, um, I started thinking of things that we could do as dads with our kids that would number one, be fun. Uh, number two, be um, a teaching moment from time to time. And, and really just an opportunity for dads to connect with kids in the way in which dads do. And that is side by side doing activities. So is this book exclusively for dads or are there some activities in the book that could possibly be helpful for others as well? Well, every <laughs> once in a while we can drag mom along too, but um, we recommend it for, for grandparents, for uncles, um, you know, just any, any guy that's got kids somewhere in their world, fun way, you know, if you want to be the fun uncle or you want to be the fun grandpa, um, here's a great way to make that happen. Moms are going to be the ones to buy the book. So you want to include mom in the book at some point, you know, in some of the activities. But yes, in, in this culture, we do find a lot more grandparents raising their grandkids. So it is for dads, grandparents, granddads, aunt, uncles, you know, anybody that has children in their life. Yeah. And again, for stepdads, uh, what an amazing tool. It's it's like a little field guide. It's just this handy dandy little book, um, like a, a field guide for stepdads to connect with kids that they haven't been uh, around for a very long time. Now, it's interesting that you brought up stepdads because like I'm unmarried, I don't have kids of my own. However, when I go on dates with women, it's it's almost a guarantee that she would have children of her, of her own, you know, given our age. So not ever having had children of my own, I tend to be a little awkward around kids because I don't have any of my own. So how could this book help men who may be future step parents in the future? Sure, that's a great question because statistically speaking, there's gonna be a lot of them. And, and that's, a, that's a good thing to have connection. Um, our our daughter-in-law was raised by her stepfather and calls him dad. I mean, it, so it's a powerful, powerful thing. Um, one of the things you can do is uh, there's 75, just ask your child to pick a number between one and 75. And it takes all the awkwardness out. You know, we're going to randomly pick a, 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 an activity or let the child pick. Um, the activities are very simple. Um, we have a key in the front as to how much money it's going to cost you, uh, how much time it's going to take, how much effort, uh, age appropriateness. So there's many, many different ways to take the awkwardness out um, when you're when you're looking through the book. Or you could just not tell the kid that you have the book and just come up with this really brilliant <laughs> idea. Hey, we should go do this today. And then you look like the hero. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> you look like a superstar. <laughs> That's amazing. Now, now you offer creative, budget-friendly activities, and some of which I hear are free, that also serve as catalysts for conversation, vulnerability, and fun. So can you share some of these activities and explain how these ideas motivate everyone in the family to participate? Well, my favorite activity is the waffle bar, um, where you just make waffles, and then you have all different kinds of toppings, whether it's whipped cream or ice cream or chocolate, caramel, you know, everybody and let everybody make their own. And then you talk about how we're all different because we all, you know, you made yours with butterscotch and I made mine with chocolate and we're all different. We need to celebrate everybody's differences. That's just an easy one. So what we've done is we've done the activity. We've done a section where you can draw closer to God and, and it make a spiritual connection. And then a, a section where you can draw closer to each other. And, um, so we, 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 we've got some questions for you already to ask your kids, again, to ease the awkwardness. But I've got three favorites, different age groups. Um, for the little ones, uh, a very inexpensive thing, you can go to a craft store and buy, buy a birdhouse kit. And it, it's just you just glue little pieces together and you make this little birdhouse and you can paint it, um, make it unique and set it somewhere in the yard or 
on a post where you can watch birds come and go. Very simple. Uh, even a three-year-old can help do that kind of a thing. For that middle section, that 10 to 12-year-old uh, uh, section, uh, my favorite one is an obstacle course. Just start hauling stuff out of the garage into the backyard and set up some sort of obstacle course for them to run, time them, see who can do it the fastest, make it different. And, and, and that was absolutely free. You know, you don't have to pay a dime for that, but you're, you're going to have a lot of fun creating it and then running the obstacle course. And then for the older teenagers, uh, one of the things that's becoming very popular here in the States is um, axe throwing. And so like, like bowling alleys, these axe throwing, you have your own lane and it's protected and they teach you how to throw an ax. And um, it's, it's really a lot of fun because you, you feel like you're, you know, back in the olden days trying to kill a moose or something. I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, they have all sorts of contests you, that you can play with the ax throwing. And again, for the older kids, that's something that's um, unique, fun. Um, not some boring kid thing. Um, so we really try and make it age appropriate. That's amazing. Now, one thing I'm really enjoying about this interview is that we're not really on a heavy topic. This is very lighthearted. There's some laughter in here. So going to your book, you believe that laughter and humor are important in a relationship and a family. So what's your advice to fathers whose circumstances make laughter and humor a challenge? You know, that really is a good question. And, and you know, we don't want to make light of anybody's situations and what you're going through, but it is important to laugh and to laugh, especially with your kids, even though you're going through, you know, whatever it might be. We were just talking to a friend yesterday who's going through a, an awful divorce and, but we were trying to make him laugh. And when he laughed, he said, you know, that feels really good. And so just to remember that no matter what you're going through, it's important to laugh and that, um, that laughter really helps you release some of that tension, some of that anxiety, and just gives you a moment. And especially when you have kids who might be going through the same situation with you, whether it's a divorce or loss of job or whatever it might be, to let them see that, you know what, we can't let life get us down all the time. We got to have some time where we just relax and have a good time. And I think, I think, you know, there's a uh, passage of scripture, uh, an old proverb that laughter doeth like good medicine. And trust us, Pain is universal. We've all experienced our own pain. You go through seasons of severe pain, whether it's job loss, relationship issues, health, health issues. And um, it's just important to remember that uh, pain and, and joy are two sides of the same coin. We wouldn't know joy if we didn't know pain, and we wouldn't know pain if we didn't know joy. Right, and yeah. to model, model that for your kids. And that's why we, we believe laughter is good medicine is because you're you're giving your kids hope when you can make them laugh. You're giving your kids uh, some of that joy. And uh, there's nothing uh, more precious than to hear little kids giggling. <laughs> and um and and honestly, dad and mom set the tone. And you know that 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 tone is important to set in a in a real positive way. Now, I want to hear your thoughts on this. What about uh, parenting trends that encourage parents to? connect with their kids through TikTok challenges, apps, and social media. I want to hear your thoughts on that and how else can parents connect with their children and encourage them to participate in, act in activities as a family? You know, we get this question a lot about the TikTok challenges and stuff. And, you know, I think as a parent, you just got to be smart. And, you know, if it looks like something fun, you know, I remember when the whole, when when I first figured out what TikTok was, you know, all the whole dance things. And some of my friends were dancing with their kids on TikTok. And I'm like, you know, it's pretty funny, um, you know, as long as it was appropriate. And, you know, so some of those I think are okay. You've just, as a parent, got to be the adult and decide what is what is good. We just had a friend who was, his son was doing some challenge on throwing a basketball through hoops from some, you know, enormous away, far away place. And, and uh, it was really fun to watch him and to watch this kid, you know, make this trick shot. And so those kinds of things are fun. I think you just have to remember that at times it's really important to put down the phone. Um, we hear from parents all the time. Well, I just want to capture the memory. Well, you know what? The memory isn't in a photo. The memory is in your child's heart and in their head. And so really, Put that on the phone from time to time, but use it in a good way and be smart about it. Yeah, I think there's nothing wrong with electronics and 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 technology and things like TikTok challenges and and making reels and and all those things that you can do together as as a as a family or as a dad and kids. But um, one of the things that happens when we carry that little duber around, <laughs> it's not a phone; it's a distraction device, um, and 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 that's the challenge sometimes is to put the distractions away so that this child knows 
I'm connecting with you, or if it's children, I'm connecting with just you three. Um, and no one else in the world matters right now because you are that important to me. I'm putting my phone away for just a while. Now, I was born with amazing parents, but when I was born, my dad was in his mid to late 40s already, so he was really, really into his career at the time. He was an ordained uh, clergyman and as well a uh, a professor of world religion. So he was very, very busy and he didn't, it didn't seem like he really had a lot of time to play with me or he didn't really have a lot of energy like given his age and his work schedule. So can you just tell me like, how can fathers with really demanding work and kids schedules find time to connect with their children? I think you have to be intentional. Make an appointment. Make an, you know, dads who are, who are especially businessmen who have appointments all day long, um, you've just got to work that, not work it into your schedule, but you've got to make your children a priority and make that intentionality. You really have to put that on your calendar and say, I'm blocking this day off. This is the day I'm taking my kids to the zoo or wherever it is you're going to go. And not only will you set a model for your children, but you're going to set a model for your employees, um, for people who work beside you, uh, that you're taking that time off to be with your kids. And that really sets an example. I've got a buddy that uh, his wife is an ordained uh, United Methodist minister. And so Sunday mornings, she's out the door, you know, 6 a.m., getting ready for services and everything. And um, he started a tradition with his child, um, donuts with dad on Sunday morning. Well, well, you know, that's going to be our breakfast. We're going to go out to the donut shop. We're going to get donuts, hot chocolate, coffee, whatever. And I think that's another way for busy uh, dads to, you know, create some sort of a tradition that, you know, this is our you know, it's Bacon Wednesday. I don't know, whatever it may be, but you know, this is something we do. Taco, Taco Tuesday, and and as a as a busy person, you learn to schedule yourself and manage your schedule, and to just make sure that you leave time and both physical and emotional energy for your kids. Now, I mentioned earlier how it can be sometimes awkward for men to connect with children, especially if they aren't like their biological children. But despite differences in communication and interests, how can fathers motivate themselves to connect with their families? And is it possible for fathers and their children to find that lasting happiness? <laughs> I think that's a great question because life is so full of ebbs and flows. And I think uh, every season is, is, is very different. Um, I was, uh, I was quite awkward when the, when the newborns came home because I was afraid I was going to break them. <laughs> um, but, but once they hit about 18 months, you know, dad was on the floor playing wrestle. I mean, that was all we did was we, you know, had a lot of fun on the floor tickling and, and doing stuff like that. And then particularly my daughter, as she got into junior high, Man, I could hardly <laughs> look at her without, you know, you know, doing. Dad, don't look at me like that. Okay, well, I don't know what I was doing. So it ebbs and flows, and I think what you've got to do is you've got to be consistent. You've got to really work to be consistent. Um, Laura's very good at that, um, and and in 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 all ways, both the praise and the punishment. You know how how can you be consistent so that they know that they're not going to walk in uh, to a a, a, a a situation that they never expected. Why is it important for dads and families to grow deeper spiritually? Legacy. What's the legacy you're going to leave? Um, you know, I've got a friend who built a legacy house. I'm like, really? Um, you know, donate money to a hospital. Donate money to a, 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 your, your college, whatever. But the legacy you want to leave is in the hearts and the minds and, and the character of your kids because that's what's going to live on. Uh, I'll never forget my grandmother died when she was 92 and all her friends had you know, passed away before her and were doing a little graveside service. And all of a sudden, a bunch of these old people start walking over. They were like in their 70s. And I said, Dad, who are they? And he said, son, those people were in your grandma's youth group when she was leading the youth group. <laughs> and I'm like, there you go. That's that, that legacy of, you know, we're going to invest in our kids, but in other kids. And, and the more we invest, the bigger the rewards. Now, you've got some funny, funny family videos online. Where can we watch them? <laughs> Janelaura.com, J-A-Y-A-N-D-L-A-U-R-A.com. And that'll direct you to our YouTube channel and, and Facebook and some of the other stuff. That's amazing. Well, thank you so much for being with us today, Jay and Laura. Our pleasure.
Jay and Laura LaFoon are the authors of Ultimate Dad Night, 75 Amazing Activities for Dads and Kids.